So, we're going to Egypt this year? No. No? This year? Really? No. This year? Why? In the summer? I don't want to. Why? Want, why? I mean, Yanni, of course I miss everyone there, but no. Why? Really? Okay. Why do you want to stay, though? With, like, ISIS and stuff. Oh. Honestly. It's fine. Okay, no problem. Well, <laughs> also, if you want to go to Turkey, we took you to Turkey. No, so there was an attack there. Mm -hmm. huh? I'm like scared to travel now. Be, be natural. Uh, travel of the, is, uh, you believe God and what, what happens is going to happen. Don't, don't be a uh, fear Look, or something. if I can something. control it and not be there, Come then on. I don't want to be there. I'm not going to let what happens happen. It's, I'm scared. It's, it's okay. Don't, don't be scared. Everybody travel every day now. Yeah. Trust me. Because the high security now, they check everybody uh, go into the... I came to America in 1985, and I was have uh, full of hope. I was working in high-class restaurant, and also I work in the hotels, and I start from there. As a Muslim, I want to explain one thing. Do you believe Jesus? A lot of people doesn't know this. Do you believe Jesus? A lot of people doesn't know. And I see a lot of people. I see the country here uh, is good and the people was having uh, uh, good hearts. Yeah. After a while, I went to Egypt and I get married with my wife. She was exciting about America, and she started to study. She became a succeed teacher, and they will start to see America through our dream, our dream to make a good family. I give you credit for this. No, you are okay. No problem. You're okay. Yeah, you are okay. Yeah, your average above 90 is okay. Is Maram it? Always, yes. Maram, Maram always uh, hundreds. This it, it, is no. good. Yes, good. Yes. I mean, my dad is an old-fashioned man, so like, but some things I do have to tell him, like, you know, to be more open about stuff. Like, he wants us to finish our education, but he also wants us to, like, get married, and he also wants us to play the wife role and constantly clean and cook and stuff like that. So I'm trying to make my dad a feminist. Do you consider yourself a feminist? Yeah, of course. Before 9-11, uh, I used to have a, a restaurant. The police called me to have a gun in order to protect my business. I never go through this. You know why? Because when you're good, and you do good, and you be good for the people, never ever people gonna hurt you. This is, this is my opinion. A lot of people hate, and they make it here in America, crime of hate. A lot of people, they hate you for no reason. We face it after September 11. A lot of hate. People has the fear to go out and to eat because of what happened. And people start to uh, put uh, the picture of Osama bin Laden in my window, of my restaurant window, to make the people stop coming to the restaurant. I lost my restaurant because of September 11. Just a brief survey of history tells us that there's always been hatred. I see just the degree to which hatred exists, uh, which is higher than I would have guessed. When you think of Google searches, a lot of searches are for information. People search for the weather or the score in the baseball game last night. But sometimes people just search their random thoughts. And these searches are a little rarer, but they're kind of a modern day confessional. People are a lot more honest on Google. Americans' Google searches got very disturbing in the aftermath of the Paris 
and particularly the San Bernardino attack. The top search with the word Muslims in it was kill Muslims. Literally minutes after, uh, or seconds after you hear that two shooters in San Bernardino had Muslim sounding names, all the searches, the negative searches just shot up and, and became a huge percentage of all the searches about Muslims. People were searching things like, I hate Muslims, or Muslims are evil, and Muslims are terrorists, and Muslims are bad, and Muslims are violent, or why are Muslims violent? Searches about mosques were all about how to close them. Sometimes people even make searches, no Syrian refugees. It's not even a complete thought, just a real anger. And you might say, okay, well, people have vicious thoughts. Does this matter? So we used uh, data from the FBI on official hate crimes in the United States against Muslims uh, by week. We found very, very clearly that when these searches rise, you see hate crimes against Muslims rising. If our model is correct on how much hate crimes have risen, then the odds of being a victim of a hate crime for a Muslim is orders of magnitude higher than the odds of an American being a victim of a terrorist attack. Uh, so many, many times higher. The odds of a Muslim being a victim of a hate crime is similar to the odds of uh, someone being in a car accident over the next year. I hear about hate crimes acted on Muslims and the most common one that happens in New York City is people being pushed into the train tracks. I used to commute to school. I would take the train every day, so whenever I would hear that the train is one stop away, I'd subconsciously like tell myself to take a step back in fear of being pushed onto the tracks. And honestly, like I don't feel safe anymore sometimes, and it scares me. First, it's probably important to note that a majority of Americans had never knowingly met a Muslim after the September 11th attacks. A majority of Americans also couldn't name the Quran as the holy book of Islam or Muhammad as the leader of the Islamic faith. Muslims were routinely described as an invisible minority confused with Southern Europeans or Latinos even. And so it's important to know where we're starting from. We weren't starting from perfect information. All the polls and studies show repeatedly, even after the increase in anti-Muslim hate crimes, even after the Islamophobia of Donald Trump, American Muslims as a whole, still optimistic about the American dream, still believe this is one of the best countries where you can openly and freely be a Muslim, still help law enforcement. 40% of terror threats were thwarted thanks to proactive help by American Muslims, right? The most diverse religious communities in America and American Muslim women are the most educated community of religious women just behind Jewish American women. If you think about it, American Muslims are killing it, figuratively. And yet, there is a divide with the perception of American Muslims in Islam. The community, the crime stop, the, the everything. If everything was stopped because of... Okay, we'll yeah, yeah, just check it like this, is gonna stop. Yeah? Yeah, like, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's stopped now, it's stopped, it's stopped. It's stopped now. It's, yeah, and also... Yes, and... Halal, uh, if you want to explain it good for the people, halal is to eat good and to live good. This is halal, to eat good and to live good. The halal guys are New York City street institution. It's uh, kind of a New York original for sure. I mean, they came up in the uh, early 1990s, if I'm not mistaken. In the Midtown food scene, the food cart scene, I mean, it was in a way non-existent. So they really are kind of the originals to a degree. Thousands of the people every day, and the people coming again and again for us. For what? Not about food. Not about food, about a good relationship. Most of the, our customers, they know me by, by name. 
they love me, they want to see me all the time. I'm, I'm very happy because of this. A lot of people believe that the headscarf is like forced upon us, but I like to compare them to like my family and tell them that I wear it, but my older sister doesn't, neither does my younger sister. When you're wearing the headscarf, you're like labeling yourself. If I'm standing in a room with my older sister, you can tell that I'm a Muslim, but that's not obvious with her. Like she's obviously a proud Muslim, but she wasn't ready to be like labeled as Muslim. And basically the headscarf is a form of modesty. I choose to identify myself as Muslim. That's why I wanted to wear the hijab and like tell the world, I guess, that I'm a Muslim. So what do you think of this word Islamophobia? It's just ridiculous. I mean, were the allied powers Nazi phobic? I have absolutely no problem with Muslims that don't want to wage jihad. Let's congratulate those that aren't barbaric and savage. Muslims are beheading people, they're blowing things up. These people hate America and Judeo-Christian civilization. Now, do I engage in hate speech? Absolutely not. Islam is taking over our country. They've got these radical ideas. I'm Defend an American. Them. You are not, your loyalty is somewhere else. I feel American because I came here, I work hard, I pay tax, I'm a good citizen, and I never do anything wrong. This is the American way. To live a good life, you have to do everything for the future of your children. I'm giving them the good opportunity to, to be something in their future. And don't, don't forget this, they're going to be part of this country. I hope everything is going to be succeed for them and to be a good future for them, because this is my goal. I think Islam hates us. There's a tremendous hatred. These are people that hate our country. Hey, John, they hate our country. I do feel American. Sometimes I feel more American than I am Egyptian, which like drives my parents crazy, but it's OK. I mean, I'm Muslim and I'm an American, so like I'm kind of stuck in the middle between those two communities. So like there are some Americans that are like, oh, you shouldn't be celebrating this because it's you're Muslim, you're not an American. And there are Muslims that are like, you shouldn't be celebrating American holidays, they're not Muslim. So like I'm kind of stuck in the middle, but I like to bring both like ideas of the cultures together. Do you feel there's a lot of hate in America? I definitely feel there's a lot of hate. Like, I go online and the stuff that I see really saddens me. It's probably noteworthy that the spread of misinformation about Islam coincided with the rise of the internet, the various echo chambers that allow ideas to reverberate without being contested. Pamela, what were you doing before 9-11? I was, I was quite normal. I was the publisher of the New York Observer. I was the quintessential New York City career girl. 9-11 changed everything. I had felt guilty. I felt guilty that I didn't know who had attacked my country. And so I set about to learn. So I was increasingly drawn to the net because that's where everything was, good, bad, and indifferent. Jihad Watch is a news and commentary site. The idea that I had, this is in 2003, wouldn't it be nice if there were a site that provides news about jihad activity all around the world? This is a site that's a kind of clearing house for misinformation about Islam. If you look at what's reported, it appears to be a highly selective account of what's going on, exaggerating certain cases that appear to be anomalies and underreporting other cases such as Muslims condemning terrorism. People such as Pamela Geller and Robert Spencer have a genuine and large social media following. When I hear somebody talk that about Muslim people, I, I feel sorry for these people because these people they have no knowledge about what Islam is all about. A lot of people, they see Islam through the movie is wrong. Through fanatic people is wrong. Islam is a peace for everybody, love for everybody. 
is not to hate or to kill for nothing. God created us to know each other, not so to fight, to kill, no. You know, in fact, Muslims are taught that if you save one innocent person, it's as if you save the whole world. And if you um, kill one innocent person, it's as if you kill the whole world. Anybody who would try to link Islam and killing and death is wrong to do so. They're wrong if they're these Muslims who committed these heinous acts, but they're also wrong if they're people who make stereotypical generalizations. I don't believe that anybody who is criticizing a certain religion is racist. But the thing is, they come to the weakest link of the society, to a minority that's being vilified, and you're saying, you know what? You're not just the problem. Your ideology is the problem, and there is no way for you to be better or part of us until you denounce everything that you believe. Now, you don't have an issue of the religion, you have an issue of the people. So when you're going to see someone who looks different than you, in your mind, he's a ticking bomb. Well, when you say, do Americans understand the Middle East, you'll have some people who understand what's going on, some people who are going to be lost. It's not their homework to understand. At the end of the day, the news is the news, and they will pick up the most juicy stories to put on, stories of violence, of conflict. It's always something negative, like a Muslim person doing something negative. Every time something bad happens, I always like hope it's not a Muslim person. When we talk about the media, what do you think about Hollywood's depictions of Muslims? I mean, movies are not real life, obviously, but what do you see when you see Muslims in movies? I usually find them under. Like I told you before, I like action movies, so for a while now, there's that trend for the bad guy to be some Middle Eastern person. At first, it was like, oh, that's kind of racist, and then I got used to it, and now I'm just like tired of it. It's like, okay, we get it, Middle Eastern people are bad, just cut it out. Like, they're always the bad guys. And it sucks, like, I've never seen movies where the Muslim people are good guys. Never. Never. These acts of terrorist Tens violence... Of thousands of Syrian Muslim refugees... They're violent. They are coming for you! Because they threaten us. Radical on attacking the United States. You sit there watching this stuff on TV, and you just absorb it, because in the absence of the narratives of 1.7 billion people, all you have is a rage boy. And rage boy is an actual media term for a meme which became the defining feature of Islam. Bearded, brown, angry, bellicose man, low angle shot, with fists raised in the heavens. Ah! And this was the image, it's an actual media image called rage boy. Stock photo always used for Islam. If that's the stock photo used for Islam, what would you think about Islam and Muslims? In the absence of, say me, or my mom, or your doctor who probably saved your life. If you erase all of them, and all you have is Ayatollah, Saddam, Osama, ISIS, you would think Muslims are terrifying. Google search data shows a darker view of humanity than we usually see, because people aren't telling a survey, I want to kill Muslims, or I hate Muslims necessarily. Yesterday, a tragedy occurred. So in the aftermath of San Bernardino, Barack Obama was aware that there was a flare-up of Islamophobia, so he gave a speech. Tonight I want to talk with you about this tragedy. And also try to remind Americans not to take out their anger on Muslim Americans. We cannot turn against one another through suspicion and hate. So we looked at the data that Google searches, kind of how did Islamophobic searches respond to Obama's speech, and we actually had minute-by-minute -minute data so we could see literally how they were responding to every line. And we found that just about everything that Obama did backfired. So when he said, It is the responsibility of all Americans to reject discrimination. Searches for kill Muslims or I hate Muslims just shot up. And searches for how to help Syrian refugees went down. Anytime he argued on the importance of treating Muslims better, he tried to appeal to people's better angels kind of very explicitly. Freedom is more powerful than fear. There was a huge increase in Islamophobic searches. There was one line that seemed to have a different impact. Muslim Americans are our friends and our neighbors, our co-workers, our sports heroes. And yes, they are our men and women in uniform who are willing to die in defense of our country. After that, 
for the first time in a year, the top noun search with Muslim was not Muslim terrorists or Muslim extremists. It was Muslim athletes and also Muslim soldiers. editor at Marvel Comics. I've been at Marvel for about five years. I was having a conversation with my old boss about my childhood and how I always felt a little bit out of place everywhere that I was. And he came in the office next day and he was like, you know, it would be really great if we had like a character for readers who grew up just the way that you did. Because we all want to be heroes, don't we? And wouldn't it be amazing if heroes look just like us? I had decided the name Ms. Marvel for a few different reasons. This character had existed for decades before. She ended up becoming Captain Marvel. And also we're making a statement about the fact that this is important enough to us. We want to create a character that represents the way the world actually looks and we want to put our name behind it. With Ms. Marvel, we literally did that. And I want to talk about Miss Marvel, which is just a wonderful comic book. Yeah. This is Kamala Khan. Kamala Khan is such a big deal. I can't really describe how much I love this comic. And I think fundamentally what makes people really excited about this is that by seeing an image of yourself out in the media, it sort of validates kind of who you are and your right to exist, your right to call yourself a Muslim and an American or whatever it is, and be proud. There seems to be some concerted, I mean, there's obviously is, some concerted effort to say Islam is just wonderful. And we need more and more of it in our culture and in our countries. The superhero ain't real. Where's the real Muslim superhero? Where's the Muslim Mother Teresa? Where's the Muslim Nelson Mandela or the Muslim Gandhi? Uh, there, there isn't any, anything, anybody like that. And so they made somebody up. Yeah, so where are the real Miss Marvels? Well, they're our parents. They're the ones who are your teachers. They're the people who you're teaching, that young girl with the hijab, who probably will be a STEM genius. They're winning Olympic medals for the United States of America in fencing. They're named Malala Yousafzai, who gets shot in the face by extremists and still holds on to her religion and says, this does not represent my Muslim values and I'm gonna fight for women all around the world. They're the ones in 1996 in Atlanta when we hosted the Olympics, we said, this Muslim American by the name of Muhammad Ali represents the best of our country. Why did that Obama speech create kind of a different response, at least according to the Google search data? Just lecturing to people and telling people uh, to treat people better may, when you're dealing with an angry mob, backfire. But giving them new information, telling them something they didn't know, provoking their curiosity, that might change how they think about Muslims. Oh, I didn't know that Shaquille O'Neal was Muslim. A lot of American people, Muslim, Doctors, lawyers, uh, businessmen. These people here, they build this country with you. Do you have any idea what you want to do in the future? Yeah, I want to be a humanitarian, but I also like kind of want to be a doctor, so maybe both. Okay, is there anything else you want to say? Um, okay, I just want to say that there are white Muslims, there are black Muslims, there's Muslim in every single country. So you're not gonna get rid of us, we're here to stay. When I came in America, I met an Italian guy and he was working with me. And he said to me, what's your name? I tell Mustafa. He said, can I call you Mike? I said, why? 
My name is not difficult, Auntie. It's easy to pronounce my name. And I said to him, what's your name? He said, Frank. Can I call you Alex? He said to me, why? I said, you're asking me to change my name. I ask you to change your name. He said, no. You like your name, I like my name. It is not about name. It's about the heart. If you have a good heart, you're gonna win. This is the end of it. Good heart. And this is the first word God sent for Prophet Muhammad, read. Read to know. When you read, you're going to know what is right, what's wrong for you. Read the Quran, everything available now in the website. He created you and he has mercy on you. He doesn't like to put you in the hell fire. He wants you to put you in paradise. Think about it. You have a smart book. There is an Islamic way that comes. Teach yourself, and no, 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 for yourself. Nothing to lose.